In 1936, Pedro Linares, a craftsman in Mexico City, fell ill with a high fever and dreamed that he was in a strange land filled with fantastical, brightly colored creatures. They were shouting the word alabrije over and over again. Upon recovery, Linares began recreating the creatures in cartonera, the term used for paper mache in Mexico. Many years later, artisans in the Oaxaca region adopted Linares alabrijes to the animal carvings of their culture. Today, alabrijes are still made to resemble the dream creatures, but there are representations of almost any animal in all sizes and shapes. They're prized by collectors all over the world. Well, these vibrant sculptures that I have with me here today were inspired by this much-loved Mexican folk art, but they're not carved from wood or created from paper mache. If you look closely, you'll see that they're actually toys that have been rejuvenated and transformed. Let me show you how it's done. The first thing we're going to need is a toy. Now this might be something that you have at home that's no longer in use, or something that can be purchased very inexpensively. A plastic formed animal, action figure, stuffed toy, or a little bean bag creature like this can be used. Now a kalaka is a skeleton figure, so perhaps a doll could become a kalaka. Now you'll need to cover the surface that you're working on with something to protect it. I'm just going to use a piece of cardboard here. I've cut some plaster strips into uh, small pieces, about one half inch to maybe an inch in width. And I also need a little bit of water. All right, to use plaster cloth, just dip it into the water and gently run two fingers over the front and back like this. That activates the plaster and it also works off any excess water. Kind of helps keep your work area tidy. I'd already put a few strips on here, but you'll notice because this is a soft toy, I'm going to wrap it rather loosely. If I were using a harder surface such as a plastic toy, I could wrap it pretty tightly but I'm going to distort the shape of this beanbag animal if I wrap it a little too tightly. Now the first few strips are not going to want to stay very well, but keep going because the more you get on there, the easier it is to work it. And you can kind of smooth out the plaster too as you go. Now the whole thing will need to be covered to the best of your ability in one to two layers of plaster cloth. Then you'll need to set it aside to dry for a couple hours or overnight. While it's drying, think about ways to transform this ordinary toy into something extraordinary by adding wings, horns, claws, extensions such as this shell. This was the exact same animal and the shell was created out of an air dry clay such as DOS and allowed to dry overnight. This Tyrannosaurus Rex had some wings added and a flame coming out of its mouth. Since the clay and the plaster don't bond very well together, I recommend attaching these extensions more permanently with tacky glue or a glue gun once they've dried. Rough spots that might be created by not getting the plaster blended very well, and there's always a few little strings or two. These can be cut away or you could use a little bit of sandpaper uh, to work those down. And if you'd really like a super smooth surface, coat the item with two to three coats of gesso before you start painting. All right, now it's time to paint. This is a Blick Studio acrylic, which goes on pretty opaque for a fluorescent color, but it just gives bright, bright, bright color that just zings on these little sculptures. One word of caution, once a toy has undergone the transformation to an alabrije, there is no going back. Well, a PDF with a list of the supplies needed for creating these creatures, teaching standards, images, and more is available for your use at dickblick.com.